Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Joni Young and I'm an acrylic artist and instructor. This is a really pretty painting for spring, Valentine's, a gift for somebody you love, perhaps a new baby, um, whoever you love, or maybe just for yourself. This can look really pretty hung on the wall in your house. So I'm excited to show you guys how to do this. I personally made one for myself and I think it looks really pretty in my house. I'm working on an 11 by 14 canvas today. You can paint this on anything smaller or larger. And I've got the following colors, sap green, a little bit of cadmium yellow, a light hue, phthalo blue, and titanium white. I'll be adding the flower colors after. This is just what we need to start um, the first two steps. The very first step is blue with a little bit of white. I wanna create a very pretty blue sky background. And for that, I'm just gonna be using a large blending brush. This one happens to be my number 50 filbert, but you can use any brush, a flat one, anything you want, just for getting the coverage and paint to the entire canvas. What we're gonna do is just start by getting our brush a little bit wet. I'm gonna take all that blue, a little bit of white, Look at how pretty it looks mixed together there. I love phthalo, it's one of my favorite blues. And we're just gonna start covering up the whole canvas any way you like. I tend to do these figure eights, swirly crisscrosses. Now a good tip for you if you want an easier way of blending your acrylics around is just wet your canvas slightly beforehand. Only a little bit though, you don't need to have uh, a really wet dripping canvas otherwise that will do the opposite your paint won't stick to the canvas and it'll be a big mess and you'll be really frustrated so just a little bit of water is all you need I had other ideas for this and I still might do them. You could choose somebody's name. Um, you could uh, put be mine, have the lettering be mine for Valentine's if you wanted to make a Valentine's gift or I do for a wedding on a really big canvas. Wouldn't that be pretty? And the next step, I'm gonna be taking a number nine filbert brush for the lettering. I'm gonna take green, and I'm just gonna start with my green first. So I'm gonna write love, L, O, I'm just gonna do this roughly first, just to get it spaced out. And if you want to sketch yours out first, Go ahead and do it if you're somebody that really wants to space yours out perfectly. I like things a little bit freer looking, a little crooked, lopsided. <laughs> That's kind of my style. So this green will dry a bit darker and it's also gonna be a really nice um, backdrop to the flowers, right? You got the greenery in there. It helps tie everything together. And it's also really complimentary for the warm pinks and reds that we're gonna be using in this. go over to my number two round brush okay again number two round brush I'm gonna take some white yellow and green and we're just gonna do some little dots and dabs little flicks like this different directions You can do this if your lettering is dry or if it's wet. Mine's wet right now, and it's kind of nice either way. You can pick up the green underneath and 
use it to your advantage to make some different um, shades of the green so you'll be left with some darker areas and yeah see all the different colors you can make or shades of greens and yellows it's very spring like spring is one of my favorite uh, seasons new beginnings fresh start all the new flowers starting to bud some blooming I think we have some coming up here on uh, Vancouver Island already somebody posted a picture little snowdrops I think they're called and in some parts some crocuses are coming up a little bit more white depending on how much white you use that will determine how bright this dries so the yeah the yellow and the green are uh, not transparent or they're transparent I mean and uh, if you add a little bit of white they'll it'll kind of show up better so it'll hold the bright yellowy green little leaves and dots and dabs that we're adding here don't worry too much about trying to make your lettering perfect because you can just camouflage by adding some little flowers here and there this is something fun you could do with your kids too And you could get really creative with this if you wanted. Add little butterflies, your favorite flowers, add little things that represent spring to you, maybe a little dragonfly. All depends on your preference and what you want to take the time to add to yours. But you could get really creative but this today is just something basic simple I have another version of this with uh, the wording layout differently so I have the canvas turned the opposite way with L O V E um, many of you guys have probably seen that one already but I'll leave a link below in case you haven't going to take a little bit of my green now with a clean, uh, clean brush and I'm just going to dab around just making a little bit more depth and shadow here around the edges. This can give your lettering a little bit more of a, a 3D look. Depends on how much you want to add but just, I'm just showing you guys really simple ways you can improve your paintings. So I'm going to get my liner brush wet. This one's a number one. And I'm going to take some white. And all I'm gonna do is go around and make circles, okay? I'm gonna go out of the lines. I really wanna make it random. They don't have to be perfect circles. show you guys really easy easy approach to painting little roses this is kind of like 
modern take on this Victorian spring pictures and um, Valentine's. Just had to reload. So I have another one here. Maybe a couple smaller ones. They don't all have to be the same size. I'm gonna be coming in between them and doing the same thing with my neon pink. If you're curious what um, you can use if you don't have the neons, by the way, these are Holbein. Um, you can use any pink any red that you want. I just really personally love um, my neons, especially this brand. They're beautiful. Okay, washing my brush out. I'm gonna go and do the same thing now with my pink. So we're gonna have a few different pinks going on because We've got a cooler one. This is a cooler pink. And the red is warm. And it's going to make a really warm, pretty, delicate pink. This one will be more of a bubblegum pink. these ones here just because they're starting to dry out and this actually looks pretty already doesn't it but now I'm gonna wash my brush off and I'm gonna go into my white and I'm just gonna start going around and creating little half circles See how easy that is? You can do little, almost like little crescent moons. Take more white. Do smaller ones on the inside. Kind of twist. You don't want to over blend. I like there to be more flowers than uh, greenery in these lettering or in this lettering today. So I'm going to just make them a little bit bigger if I need to. I'll go over and add some more uh, color later on. But I'm just going to get these ones now with the white while they're still wet. You know, the acrylic dries so fast. But this is, isn't this just so simple and pretty? Very minimal effort. If you can't do a few scoops and little half circles, then just go around and around and around and that'll look like roses too okay so i'm going to show you right here to do that you're going to take a little white on the tip of your brush start in the center and make it bigger and bigger and look at that even easier i'm just going to mix it up so i'm demonstrating both techniques for you
And of course, if your paint starts to dry, just go back, take a little bit of it with your white. That's why I would recommend applying it a little bit, the first color a little bit on the thicker side. Now I think I might do a whole series of these um, painting different flowers. I love violets and in fact I've had, I think that's the only flower that's lasted in my garden. Violets like it nice and cool so I've got uh, heavenly scented. They're really old-fashioned. They're You don't find them very often anymore. They were a nice little bonus surprise when uh, we bought this place and moved in. And they're just the most gorgeous smell. They smell like, almost like jelly beans. Some type of candy. See how I started it on an angle like this? and that will change the direction of your roses so they're not all front facing. It's nice if you can change it up. And you just simply do that by, you know, starting it on a different side. So instead of coming in, then go out. I think that we intimidate ourselves, we psych ourselves up or out about um, painting roses and we think, oh, they're so hard. Well, they can be if you're trying to paint super hyper realistic ones, um, but they don't have to be. So I hope that you guys are uh, enjoying this simple version of painting roses. You can always go back into with, if you really want some more detail with a smaller um, micro mini liner brush. I did get some of those. I actually found them. I knew I could get some really small, good quality ones in the nail art um, section. So I got some of those. They're pretty, they've got these little beads and like decorative handles. I'll show you guys them in a minute. I showed you guys those in my last video. Um, but if you missed it, I'll just show you again or show you in this video. And then I, I, I really like them. So I left a, a link. Now I don't get paid for any of the my Amazon links that I leave. I just like to um, share with you guys products that work well for me and that I know you're going to enjoy as well. So I'm going to add a few more. I'm just going to take both colors, well, a little bit of uh, pink and white, and I'm going to add a few more here. So I'll come in with a lighter pink to start for my base and then I'm going to come over top with white because I did say originally I wanted to have more flowers than uh, the green. Don't be afraid to overlap lapping is nice and really effective in making uh, your paintings look a little bit more realistic. I can need a little one there on the end. Let's add a little one there. Maybe just a little guy right here too. And right here. <laughs> when it comes to roses, more is better. <laughs> Do remember to tell my husband that with Valentine's coming up. Roses and chocolate. And I'm a happy girl. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys these micro mini nail brushes that I got. Okay. 
in case you want to get some look how pretty they are they have these little beads inside of them and whoops I'm dropping things and so you can they came in different sizes and lengths so this is the longer one And then here's a shorter one okay with the blue powder blue I like pretty things so and even like the handles it's like shimmery metallic -y almost um, anyways I'm gonna use this one this is the perfect doesn't have a size or a number on it I just know this is nice and short and it's gonna work well and I'm gonna place my pinky here when I do this um, it gives my hand the steadiness and control that I need so it's really helpful I'm just gonna take white. I've got my brush up a little bit wet first, and I'm just gonna come inside and do skinny little swirls. I need to get my brush a little bit more wet. Okay, and I'll do the same thing here. Little swirls. Because they're so small, you're going to need a little bit more paint on them. And you're going to need to reload often. Don't apply much pressure at all, okay? You just want to use... As soon as I start to try to apply a little bit of pressure is when it goes all wrong. Because for what we're doing, we just need to use... We're relying on the tip of the brush. Now, as these are drying, they're a little bit darker, and I'm just going to come in here and demonstrate. But see, when I start to push like that, it it makes the brush lose that pointy shape that I need. So you can choose uh, any dark colored background that you want. I recommend a darker background because it's going to make your flowers and your lettering pop out more. I'll quickly show you at the end of this video. I'll grab that um, first one I did. Um, that one I did on a black background. This one I'm liking a lot more, probably because it's more colorful and color makes me happy. Well, color, chocolates, and roses. <laughs> side now and do a few of those little swirls circles getting bigger and bigger starting really small see there's so many different kinds of roses too I think they're called the pa the paper roses I mean it's a real rose but they're called paper roses they kind of grow like that they look like that um my husband and i went to the famous bouchard gardens last summer and it was absolutely beautiful they have so many different themed gardens and of course my favorite was the rose the rose gardens and they'll have their own unique uh, fragrance some of them some roses don't really have a scent um, but there's citrusy smelling ones there's sweet smelling ones so they're all a little bit different this other one I did so here is some if you guys can see that I might need to back up the camera and I can show you 
So there's different types of flowers in this one. We've got the daisies, little forget-me-nots, and roses. I got a lot more colors in this one and yeah on the black background so the lettering is placed differently that makes it uh, kind of fun and so I'm gonna end this video and thank you guys so much for joining me today and happy painting can't wait to see your versions of this on our Facebook group or Instagram just tag me in it I'd love to have a look and I am really good usually about replying so have a wonderful day and I'll see you guys all soon in my next video. Bye.